What's up, y'all? What's up? Welcome to the check in. I am your host, Serafina, along with my man, Nesto. Um, we are here to talk about something that is very near and dear to my heart, um, something that I feel that is very needed within the boxing community. Um, there's been a recent uptick in domestic violence, uh, deaths, um, and I'm taking it upon myself to create a safe space for fighters and the boxing community as a whole to come and discuss um, some issues that, you know, plague our community. Um, you know, we share, we seek assistance with dealing with the stresses that, you know, life in and out of the ring may bring. Um, we've created this, me and Ness, for our guests to have the platform to tell their stories um, and perhaps help other boxers and fighters alike and people that work in the industry that may be in similar situations. Um, recently, one of my fighters, Samuel Taya, passed away due to a domestic dispute that you know, went overboard. Um, and then you have another fighter by the name of Kem Killick, who uh, overdosed, very good fighter, had a lot of potential, but his life Sarah, was cut. We do yeah. have uh, Andre Durrell checking in. Are you ready to take him in? Yeah, 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 let's bring him in. What up, Dre? What's up, Doug? <laughs> So I'm super excited to have Dre on here. Um, if you don't know who Andre Durrell is, well, then you must not have been watching a lot of boxing in the last 20 years. But um, former bronze medalist, world champion, um, we met during, I think, before the Super Six. Um, so we've known each other for a really long time, and Andre has always been a great supporter of mine, hence the beautiful artwork in the background. <laughs> right? Wait, what? Hold on. That one there? <laughs> no, not that one. <laughs> My yeah, bad, you know. Done by the, the one and only Serafina, man. Yes, right there. Sir. Yes, Hooked sir. Yes, sir. Hooked your boy up. Hooked your boy up. What's up with you, Cap? I'm good, man. Thank you for coming on the show, man. And thank you for, you know, obviously being willing to share your story with so many others. You know, with my time in this sport, we've seen that uh, it's not easy for uh, men to open up about their stories and express, mm -hmm. you know, themselves and, uh, you know, put themselves out there, man. So credit to you and thank you for joining us. But, uh, yeah, I'm doing well. Thanks. No doubt, baby. I got you, most definitely. You still out here in it's Florida, like, right? No, I'm in, uh, in GA now. Oh, okay, okay. Yep, yep. Had to make a move. Yeah, I hear you, I hear you. I'm back and forth from Florida to Vegas myself, but uh, yeah, yeah, take it away, Sarah. Yeah, so just recently, uh, you know, you announced your retirement and mm -hmm. a really emotional uh post on Instagram. I think it was on like one of your stories and it really touched me because, you know, men in general, but especially fighters, right? You guys have like this tough outer exterior and for right. you to share yourself in that way to everyone um, showed a lot of courage, you know, and uh, I'm sure you got a lot of like you know, outpour of, you know, support, but I'm sure you had other fighters that might be in the similar situation that, you know, what happens after retirement? What do I do next after I've lived my last 20 years of my life? This is all I know. What's next for me? And so what I want to ask you is like, how have you embraced this retirement? How have you moved forward with your life? And what was that like announcing to the world that, right. you know, the day has come, you know? Right. First and foremost, man, when I uh, put that post up, man, it wasn't for the audience per se, right? Uh, the, me retiring. It wasn't even a retirement post, right? It was an emotional outpour, you know, um, um, really of me not getting the fights I wanted, you know, or the, the exposure I wanted leading toward the end of my career right and uh it and what i was putting out there was actually for the fighters man um you have to realize when your time is up right we fight so hard man to 
give our last um, hurrah, right? Because we think, you know, regardless of age, I was 39 at the time when that happened, um, because we think that we are just as capable because we have that much more appreciation for the sport. I remember two years prior, I was at the gym, or 2016, I'm sorry, 18 or 16, 16 or 17, I was in the gym, Andre Ward's gym, working with Virgil. And I took the time to, uh, I was the last one in the gym. I took the time to stare because I knew this time was coming to an end. I knew my time was coming to an end. I kept hearing it, but I knew it was coming. And so I decided to sit in that gym and just soak it all in. 360X, so I stood and I just watched my surroundings, right? We feel like we have so much more to give in those last days, man, in a sport. And this can easily equate to life, right? So it's important to realize that now, being young, that, you know, I might be old in the sport, but I'm young in life, right? But this time, too, is coming, right? So it was an emotional outpour for me to let the world know, or the boxing world know, the boxing community, fighters just like me, man, in similar situations that... It's here that you might think it's not, but it's here. It's actually here. Your time is coming to an end. Do whatever you can in this sport. Don't force it upon yourself because God might be trying to lead you towards something better, right? Uh, and definitely was my case. Doesn't make my life much easier because I don't see those big paychecks no more. But um, it's just a difficult role. But still, the path that he got chosen for you after that, after you can have the strength to finally let it go, right? You can embrace the new journey and start living life on life's terms, you know, it's so on your own terms, but dealing with, with whatever life throws your way, right? So that's what that post was actually meant to do. It wasn't a retirement speech. I can't believe they took it and used it as I'm like, damn, that was not a retirement thing. I was done though, but I'm the guy who's gonna keep that to myself. I don't care about I ain't care about a big announcement, you know what I'm saying? I ain't care about letting the world know. I figured my time was over, and I just realized that, and that's that's where the tears came from. That's where the emotion came from, because like, damn, I've been doing this my whole entire life, and now it's over. So I embraced that at that moment. That's what I jumped on to say, and uh, I hope the, a lot of the fans received it. What are some of the things, like, when, a, when you're at the end of your career, what are some of the signs like that a fighter should take heed to, you know, like if, you know, let's say he's not getting the calls or like, when is it time to say, you know what, let's just move on from this. How do you yeah, that's know? Good. That's a good question. It's going to be an array of signs. You're not going to just get one. You get less exposure. Um, you get less calls. You'll get less opportunities. Right. I think these are those are the biggest factors. And then when they do decide to bring you up on a fight, um, it's OK. He's at the television end of his career. This right here is a um, um, what do they call it? It's a no win situation for the opposition that I will be facing. Say if it's a young up and comer. High risk, low reward. I take pride in that. You know what I'm saying? Knowing that my ability, I still have the ability to potentially wipe this guy out, but the fans don't see it as such, especially fans that's clinging on to opposition that you could possibly face. This is like, why would I take a chance with somebody who's not going to yield much of a reward, but presents all of the danger, right? And this fans are going to go right along with them. We're seeing all kinds of stuff that's because the promoters telling the fighters not to take certain fights, um, Fighters don't take them, and the fans are right on board with them. So every excuse that, co that comes with that is valid. And you hear the most ridiculous excuse today. Like in this era, you never heard, you never heard of uh, what is the clause where um, the weight clause or what the, uh, the weight limit rehydration clause? clause. Yeah, the rehydration clause. I ain't never heard of that in a day in my life. You know what I'm saying? Started hearing, I'm just like, that's that's mind blowing. Um, you know, but. It's valid now because your fans are gonna jump right on right on board with you. Are you if you want validation, go to your your comments. You know, so right. just pay attention to those. I mean, there's there's plenty of signs though, plenty of signs. Right. Um, you know, I remember back when uh when we had the Super Six and uh you had the fight with Arthur Abraham 
And, you know, you had so many people that came out and, you know, we're in the, this age of social media to where you can't help but look at what people say. Oh, yeah, right. Well, they're, and, they're and, and, you said, you know, I knew you weren't faking an injury, but you had the, mm -hmm. the people who were coming out saying you were faking head yeah. trauma um, yeah. and or, or ducking ward or whatever. Well, the case I remember was. they questioned the doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. They questioned crazy. his name or I something. Too. Oh, man, that was the biggest crazy. thing. It was two that was hilarious to me. What, 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 the question that doctor wasn't hilarious, but they were just like, what the heck? You know what I'm saying? They said the doctor's imaginary. Uh, whatever his name was, Dr. Shaw, whatever he was, because I ain't know him well either, right? And the two was, uh, man, y'all probably don't know about this, but I saw it was cracking up, man. Um, they said I should be a sponsor for, for, for Vagisil. <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing so hard, man, because fans can be so cruel, man. Oh, <laughs> you no, know, that, but boxing but fans yeah, are brutal. Yeah, they are, man. Boxing fans are brutal. And and probably in every sport of life. But honestly, man, boxing is a sport where you can get embarrassed because you don't take a loss as far as like you just come back and shake it off. You get beat up. You know what I'm saying? You take a you get knocked out. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it hurts that much more when it's like boxing and fans are unforgivable, man. So yeah, it sucks, but it give and takes. It makes you stronger. I say you learn how to deal with it and just move on to the next. What was? How did you deal with that? Like that scrutiny? Yeah. Like what? Oh, that, was, that was that was that was. I you don't even need to finish the question. Um, that was what made me for real. That's what helped. That one helped me, and it took a long time. That didn't just happen when I read the last hateful comment. Like I I I hid in the in the shell. I was down in my basement in the in the. In a in the darkest corner, you know what I'm saying? Trying to deal with why people would think the strongest man in the game right now uh uh didn't hit me as hard as they think he did, and I was on the ground. You know what I'm saying? It was just mind blowing to me the hate I was getting, you know, because it comes out of nowhere, honestly, because everybody praises you as long as you're winning. And I see this with every fighter who comes up, if they have they for not only first loss, but they first bad performance. People are going to come out of the woodwork. You're going to see all kinds of hate comments. But right before that, every comment was good. Like, every comment, they was praising you. Like, bro, you was it. You know what I'm saying? Next, next thing you know, you know what I'm saying? You get up, you get on your bike or something like that, and you're going to see, you're going to read all kinds of comments. It's like, the same people who rooted you on, they dogging you out now. You know what I'm saying? So that was, man, that was damn near crucible, right? One of my crucibles, man. But... That was a big thing to overcome, and that allowed me sooner or later, you know what I'm saying, to finally adjust to, okay, this is what it is to be a means to be a boxer, and the lead one at that, you know, roll with the punches. I would imagine, like, during those times is, like, you're a family man, always have been a fam family man. Yeah. I think you've been married since I've known you. Yeah, um, exactly. Are these some of the times to when you kind of, like, lean on your family, like, you know, and just kind of turn off the phone. Yeah. You know, what would what do you think you would suggest to fighters that might be going through the same thing? Like, let's say they have their first loss, you know, or they were knocked out and, and you know, they're receiving all this backlash from every angle. Like, would you say to them to turn off the phone, turn off, like, because in my experience, right, like, and I've been in a lot of drama, we all know that, but, it's like when you continue to uh, respond, you know, and, and you continue to try to, uh, you know, make a way for yourself or, 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 or what do you call it? As long as you're responding to it, you're going to keep the fire going, right? You're defending yourself. You're making excuses for yourself. Well, this is why this is. People don't want to hear that. You're guilty until proven innocent in boxing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and yeah. so in my experience, I felt like the less I respond and the less I pay attention to it, the quicker it's going to go away. Mm -hmm. Because in boxing, there's always something new. There's all not even just in boxing, but <clears throat> entertainment period. Right. Mm -hmm. There's always a new scandal. There's always, you know, something else going on. Next week, it's going to be something else. And the less you respond to that issue that's hindering you, yeah. the less you're going to hear about it. Yeah, the easier it dies out. Right, right. Ignoring it can be the best option. 
right? The last thing you want to do as a fighter, as someone who's supposed to be animalistic, this is to my wife, this is to my mother, my grandmother, I don't care who it is, fuck pitying me. Don't pity me. Don't give me no soft spoken words. Don't try to make me feel better about the situation. That's just like me spoiling a kid after doing something you got in trouble for. It's like that's not gonna happen. Like you're you're in a you're in a barbaric sport, or we're in a barbaric sport, right? So, in a way, right, become bar barbaric. It is what it is. It comes with the territory. Eat that. Use it. Like you gotta figure out a way to use that because when you get hit with that that first line of insults out the door, it, it I don't care how bad the fight looks. A prime example, me and Curtis Stevens, when I was on my bike moving like a, a like a, 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 a racehorse, right? It's like, okay, right? Like, it is what it is now. I got to embrace it. I got to make do in the next fight. I'm I'm going to become, just say I got to start all the way over right now. This is the first, this is the first time Drake gets to step in the ring. I'm using everything that I've went through to make my to make me harder, right? So if I had the opportunity to keep going, and which I don't want, um, I'm gonna turn that aspect of it on first. Be an animal, be a beast, be barbaric. You know what I'm saying? Fight on. You know what I'm saying? Keep everybody out the way that's gonna try to push against that and try to, you know, normalize it. Boxing ain't normal. Being in the ring, you know, putting your life in the law, that ain't normal. Basketball is normal. Like, at, at the level they at, it's not. You know what I'm saying? But basketball, football, all this stuff is normal, man, until you reach elite levels where it takes something else. And what that is, man, you might have knew, you might not knew you had it in you, but it's there. You know what I'm saying? If I would have put that dude out sooner or later, the way my last fight went, all of my fights would have went. Now, as a fighter, right, you're talking about animalistic and, yeah. you know, being a beast in the ring. You've always been one of the nicest guys I've ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. Like you're, mm -hmm. you're such a sweetheart. You're just such a pleasure to be you're around. Not, I just told you, man. I just told you. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> but no, but seriously, like, yeah. how do you as a fighter know when to turn it on and turn it off? Because a lot of guys can't. And yeah, no, they, no. Yeah. they handle all of their interactions with aggression. Yeah. You know, everything is solved with the fist, right? Mm -hmm. Like, how, what would you suggest to other fighters? Like, if they get into a situation outside, or like, how, like, what do you? How do you differentiate when you need to fight and when you don't need to fight? That's all going to depend on if the fighter needs that or not, right? Prime example: Jamel Jamel Charlo is the one with all of that with the most aggression he got the meanest attitude jamal he a little softer right jamal jamal uses that as a chip on his shoulder and he makes do disregard his last fight you know what i'm saying like that was a huge step up you know what i'm saying but for most of his career pretty much all his career i honestly believed it worked for him because i didn't put him in the high highly skilled category i just say both charlos are good boxers nothing more nothing less you know what i'm saying with jamil having the slider edge so for most man for some that works for them right uh and for the ones it doesn't we're not asking you to change who you are we, we we're asking you to change how you need to be when you step in that gym you know what i'm saying it's like no holes bars and not only that because we got to maintain a thinking mind you got to be able to think under pressure you got to be able to think once you get hit you got to be able to keep your cool when you get hit with a big shot or when you just get frustrated in the ring right but somewhere you know um in your medulla oblum gotta you know what i'm saying you gotta um keep that connection firm you know what i'm saying you can't allow that connection to break and uh and uh probably just listen to your coaches, man, and continue to execute. So it's it's, it's not getting madder or docilin' down. It's man, being able to stay the same as when you started. You feel what I'm saying? Um, that's pretty much all I can say about that without overcomplicating it. I hope I right. got it.
got it so, across. In a I, th I thought you were going to go somewhere else with the Charlo thing, but we're I gonna, could. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. no point. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh -uh. but at some point, we 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 going to get into the, you know, at some point in the show, maybe not this show, mm -hmm. but we're going to talk about you know uh, domestic violence and these sort of things because yeah. it is something that definitely yeah. plagues our community. It's deep. Yeah, and for sure. um, you know, guys need an outlet. Guys need guys and women. It happens with yeah. the women too. You know, yeah. uh, I know some female fighters that have been in relationships and, you know, they're the abuser, you know, yeah. and I'm not I'm not going to say names, but it yeah. happens, you yeah. know, but, uh, you know, like, so then you have your brother, Anthony, and you guys, I feel, have super different temperaments, mm -hmm. you know, maybe I think inside and outside of the ring. Right, yeah. I guess that's why they call Anthony the dog, and you're like the Matrix because you're like a little elusive. But Anthony's like mm -hmm. kind of just like fuck it, his balls yeah. to the walls. Excuse my language, but yeah. you yeah. know, yeah. like you guys have very different personalities. But you guys were brought into boxing, I believe, by your grandfather because mm -hmm. he was a huge boxing fan. I know he was friends with Muhammad sure. Ali, um, and I'm sure that was like a dream of his to see his grandchildren become world champions but you have most I'd, I'd say most people that get into boxing are brought into boxing because they need some sort of outlet um because they were either fighting as children or you know just were running around all over the place but i feel like boxing yeah it's a great outlet however does it get to the root of the problem of why the kid is fighting in the first place you know, yeah, and, an and you have a very yeah. different story. So, like, what's your take on that? Yeah. Before I, before I go on, man, did he want to elaborate on the last part, man? No, I was yeah, I yeah. was actually going to steer away, so you might as well answer her question because I just wanted okay. to ask how would you decide what life after boxing was going to be? We could touch on it right. later. Uh-huh. Um, man, usually boxing is an outlet for the rage, right? That in no means means that rage is contained because you box, right? You're gonna probably take that with you even on a higher note, depending on the personality, once you walk out of that gym, ring, you know, fight atmosphere, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that right there is not me, is beyond me. Um, all I could say to that is um, probably the most dorkiest thing in the world, and that would be to seek professional help. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's pretty, because that's not me. That's not anywhere I can take it. We can continue this conversation, right? But I was never that dude, right? Like, so, like, I see, and I've seen it, and I've heard about it, right? But, you know. I, I I really don't. I wouldn't know where to take that. I wouldn't know. You know what I'm can saying? Can you be? Can you elaborate more? When you say you weren't that dude, what do you mean that yeah. they needed the rage to box? Yeah, exactly. Listen, and it's crazy because I did need it, right? I did need the rage to box, but there was no way I could conjure it. I couldn't decipher who I was from who I need to be when it came in the ring. When it when we when it's when it came to the face off, I was cool with shaking my opponent's hand. I was cool with letting him know it's just business. I'm not about to say I'm cussing you out because I'm fighting you tomorrow. I'm really not about to resort to possible blows and we jump in the ring the next day. You know what I'm saying? So that's dumb on multiple reasons. Like it's gonna be easy for me to literally let you hit me, slap me, um, slam me to sue you for some of that money after we fight and I beat you down the next day, you know what I'm saying? If the fight goes on, you know what I'm saying? Um, fighters need to learn how to keep their cool in situations like that, man. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a big problem, and that turns our sport ugly because let's not forget, man, it is an art. Boxing is an art. Listen, to keep a guy who weighs 250 pounds, 240 pounds, or a dude just built muscle bound and you soft as heck, but you can keep him off with a jab, man, that takes tremendous skill. Tremendous art, you know what I'm saying? So um, I, I want to keep that level of respect, too. I think you do need to be 
somewhat barbaric. I think you do need to be animalistic. I think you do need to be mad. But we do have to understand that boxing is a science. You know, I want to always keep both aspects at play because they work for, for the sport. You know what I'm saying? Drama sales. We all know that. You know, and boxing is a beautiful sport, man. I don't think any sport will overtake it. I work with clients, NFL players, NBA players. You know, I work with all sorts of clients from different sports. And listen, they all come and say the same thing, man. I respect boxing so much. And that's because I'm taking them through an hour workout, bro. One hour? Come on, man. It's that it's, you know, you got to be in a different type of shape to, to, yeah. to, to box. You know, um, mm. you can be working out every day in the gym. That's not going to yeah. guarantee that you could do three mm -hmm. minutes, three mm -hmm. rounds. <laughs> um, but, but how did you decide what life after boxing was going to be? Because from the looks of it, it looks like mm -hmm. you, you're doing the personal training yeah. Uh, yeah. thing now. I didn't. I, it, it was... God forced it on me, right? So, and that leads to my next thing. It's like when God is trying to lead you somewhere, man, the sooner you accept it, the better off your life going to be. The sooner your life, you can start living a better life, right? Because we all tend to hold on to what was, right? Like, this is who I've been my whole life. This is who I want to stay. Like, I still got more to give. And this ain't just in boxing. This is any and everything. You know what I'm saying? Um, Bro, we all know time brings change, right? So you, at some point or another, have to adapt. Even if it isn't right now, you know what I'm saying? And just say they did give me the fights I wanted. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like they're going to give me praise. You know what I'm saying? Like they're going to show me crazy love. They're going to be like Andre over here. But heck, he in the ring. Let's see what he can do. We all we know all kinds of record builders out there that's, you know, contributing to the sport. You know, bringing tough fights. But they get lost on their record. So, like, like that's not the kind of respect I really wanted. But um, so on to the question, you know, to elaborate on that. Uh, I finally accepted the fact that it is what it is. And after so many rejections, I said, you know what? Fuck this. You know what I'm saying? I'm done. You know what I'm saying? I ain't about to do no elaborate buys or nothing like that. I'm Can you done. elaborate on rejections? What's that mean for you? Not picking up vague. the phone. Yeah, Al didn't pick up the phone. You know what I'm saying? In training camp, out of training camp. After the fight, the spectacular performance, he wasn't returning my calls. You know what I'm saying? And uh, at one point, I was just like, you know what? Uh, I'm going to give him to this deadline. If he don't give me a call back, then I'm done. Because they all give you the promises. They tell you what you want to hear. You know what I'm saying? Then when that time comes, now you're trying to reach for something else that you want to hear. Right? Um, so... That led me to say, okay, it's a wrap. And I told myself that straight up, like, I ain't doing boxing, nothing. I was going to get rid of boxing. I love boxing still, and I watch it still. But as far as the business side of it, just dealing with people in the industry, I was done with that for sure. You know what I'm saying? I, ain't even, I wasn't even going to do personal training. You know, but, man, God told me that's what I'm good at. So use what I'm good at. You know what I'm saying? And, again, this is difficult, right? But uh, so I'm learning as I go. I'm a great people person. Uh it suits me well. My dream is to, uh, or the end goal is to get my own little personal spot. I want to do personal training only, a like, nice little studio, and then open up Victory Lab Boxing as well for, for all people who can't afford the personal training. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I got quite a road to go here. You know what I'm saying? But God chose it. God opened my eyes for me. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't something I chose. So Victory Lab is, do you envision that in Georgia? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I'm visiting right here in Georgia. Man, Georgia is a great, is a great state. Man, great people out here. I had no idea, you know. Um, um, I'm getting along with all types of people from, you know, like from entrepreneurs. You know, Atlanta is really an entrepreneurial state, you know, or, or yeah, yeah, state or a city. You know, uh, I said state, yeah, city. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of entrepreneurs out here. It's a lot of cases. They don't have to choose boxing. You know what I'm saying? Like, the little black boys don't have to choose boxes. A lot of cats that can, you know, mentor them and make them something else, man. But on the same token, that's one thing I would love to talk about one day, man, is, uh, you know, the 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 next, the hopeful out here, the next hopeful out of Atlanta, man. We ain't seen one since Holyfield and um, Vernon Forrest, man. God rest his soul. You know, uh, Atlanta has too much talent. And man, it's about time for a world champion to emerge from this. We gotta, city. we gotta back uh, Brian Norman Jr., the assassin. Okay, uh, he out here. 
Yeah, he signed a top rank. I mean, you know, people are going to laugh at me for saying that, but, like, he's at least signed to a major what else and is, is from Atlanta, you know. Yeah. That's um, what's up, man. I'm going to keep an eye out for him. But, champ, obviously – You've been in this business so long and mm -hmm. you've been on both sides. Like you're expressing some of your frustrations. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Personal training still keeps you linked to the sport. Uh, right. But again, you sound educated. You, you're you well-spoken. You have a great mm -hmm. vocabulary. You don't think mm -hmm. managerial side, management, maybe even referee could to help the sport. Mm -hmm. Referee, commission, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. those are jobs that they're giving <laughs> dudes that are 78. Like, a 78-year-old yeah. ref can't keep, oh. you know, Fury <laughs> off of B Martin Bacoli. A, a Darrell could, he could get in All the right. middle. You know what I'm saying? And 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 maybe you don't need the money. I don't know, because uh, yeah. I don't know how well those jobs pay. But have you mm. thought of any of those situations? No, no, no. I don't want to be involved in the sport on the business side. Like even if I came in and planned on being the promoter everybody loved, I can, I can get along with the boxer. Man, when you look at it like that, man, you're destined to fail. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to be business oriented when it comes to um, any sport, contracts, lawyers, you know what I'm saying? And the fine print, man, you can't just assume that because you're going to be nice to everybody, everything going to work out, especially in boxing. If you come in trying to knock the door down, they're going to blackball you. If you come in trying to be too nice, they're going to blackball you because there's a way this sport is ran. You have to understand that and know that. So sooner or later, I don't care if it's three years from when you start, uh, the only way you're going to advance is when you finally say, okay, this is how it is. I'm, I'm going to make do, right? Um, so this sport, for that reason, is it for me? I hate the business side. You know, I don't hate business. I read up on books all the time when it comes to that. Um, but I hate the business side of boxing. You know, um, I don't like to manipulate fighters into thinking, listen, uh, I love you. You, you, you know, you, 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 I got your back. Anytime you need me, call me. That's clearly not the case. The longer you sit on the shelf. Sooner or later, that expiration date is coming. And once it's come, I don't care how good you are. Uh, I don't care how good you are. When that expiration date reads out of time, past due, you out of here. You know what I'm saying? No offense, but it's business. You know, that's not even, it's not even, that's not even the bad part about it. Like that's, that's how it should be because that's business. And this is why they say don't mix business with pleasure or love and business. You know what I'm saying? The two don't mix because business is what it is and love is everything else man everything else right um but there's a rule to it so um yeah again for that reason for the third time <laughs> i'm leaving that alone man um and i'm just chasing whatever it is my kids want to do I, like you said i'm a family man y'all know this man i i told myself that once i retire i'm gonna give my i'm gonna dedicate my life to my family so i gotta build a life um this is part of it I'm doing an influencer thing on Instagram, YouTube. I'm building up my channel as well. I just started that a month ago or two months ago. So um, I'm going to build up influence, give people tips, real boxing tips and overall tips for the fans. Like that's the play. I plan on taking that all the way. You know what I'm saying? So I'm committing to this side of it, but I don't want no parts, man. I don't want no parts of the business box. Now what I happens? Feel like, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Ness. I'm sorry, but because I did see you doing the, uh, you know, Instagram clips showing people how to do certain things and presenting certain scenarios. But what happens when one of these followers of yours happens to be a boxer that wants mm -hmm. you to train him? Look at Malik Scott. That situation presented himself, and mm -hmm. I mean, he, you know, Deontay made a lot of money mm -hmm. in his last fight, so yeah. Malik, you yeah. know, obviously yeah. is in a better position. Is mm -hmm. that something you would consider? Because you're mm -hmm. obviously teaching mm -hmm. to the yeah. masses using social media. Would you be cons would you consider one on one teaching? Yeah, I uh, I made one shout out. <laughs> yeah, I made one shout out about coaching. I think that was to Ryan Garcia uh, when he uh, in 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 an opportunity of fighting Devin. Right. I said, man, if you want to, because I just want to know how good I could actually coach someone. And I believe I can do it, you know, to the highest degree. Uh, but um, 
Um, no, I got uh, I got a program called Sweat the Technique. So fighters do come to me. Professionals come from Atlanta. They come down to see me. I've had people from four different states or three different states fly in to work with me, you know, at a premium. You know what I'm saying? They pay the most flying out to see me. You know what I'm saying? Get their Airbnb, they come, and they get work, and they all leave very satisfied. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that led me to say, man, you know what? And I think that was the spirit of the moment thing. I was like, Ryan, man, if you want to be Devin Haney, man, call me because he got the speed, he got the skills, you know what I'm saying? But he's just too – the last fight with Tank, he was just too – Turned, you know what I'm saying? Um, um, but it's not something I really care about doing. Like, but I do have that for clients, man. Um, I, I work with amateurs and professionals right now. They all here and they all ask me right now, bro. You don't train? I'm like, nah, bro. Like, I'm like, listen. In boxing, the coach is the fighter and the fighter is the coach. The fighter, the coach has to be everywhere the fighter is at all times. Training camp, in the gym. I know what that takes, man. I've been in this game for over 30 years, so. I'm just not willing to go that route again. You know what I'm saying? Um, I want to see something new. My brain has all kinds of, you know, things that I want to do. And it's not see the same sport until the day I die, bro. I don't want to be known as a legendary, uh, you know, connoisseur in boxing or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm really, I'm really ready to be a family man. You know what I'm saying? And just live my life as normal as I possibly can while being rich. So I ain't rich yet, but I will be rich. I ain't even worried about that. God give, grants me the time to make that bread. It's coming. You know what I'm saying? But uh, there's more aspects of life, and I'm ready to see them. Um, I was going to chime in on what you were saying about you not wanting to be a part of the business. Um, in your career, you mm. have you have made some good choices and you've made some not so great choices, right? And not, that's subjective because you might think <laughs> as a fighter, I made but, these choices. But, I'm telling you right now. Like, so, so what I want to uh, touch on is the make a movie that you on the agree other with, side. And they're going to say, you made that choice. <laughs> it had nothing to do with me. <laughs> but go no, ahead. But I, mean, I mean, like, so when you, <laughs> when you transitioned to... SMS promotions, right? When you mm -hmm. made that decision to leave Al Heyman mm -hmm. and to go to SMS, that was a big decision. Yeah, and, and it know, wasn't mine. And it wasn't and, mine. Okay. It wasn't mine. It wasn't mine. But, you know, yeah. like, what, you know, after the it fact, mine. you know, like, what were you thinking? Like, after it didn't work out, like, were you, were you at another stage in your career to where you like, maybe it's over for me? You know, okay. maybe this is just... This is the end, you know, so like I wanted to maybe use that story um, to tell fighters the grass may not always be greener on the other side. Right. It may right. look good because like right. what you were saying, promoters and managers are all going to, they're going to tell you what you want to hear, mm -hmm. you know, but right. they're not always going to tell you what you need to hear. No. I don't know, Sarah. That that could be one of them situations that he just brought up where even if you want to be nice, Three mm -hmm. years later, you'll get blackballed for being nice. Yeah. But, but but do yeah. tell us your situation. So, uh, my grandfather was mad at Al for um, for Al saying that he would make sure Andre Ward and Andre Durrell fought later down the line and not as soon as they had us match. He was pissed off about that, right? And uh, at the same time, I'm on the phone with Al talking about moving to L.A. He had the house picked off of me. He had everything in, in order. And uh, um, my lawyer went to my grandfather with the contract saying terminate Al Heyman. Right. And my grandfather was all for it because he was mad at, at that. My grandfather didn't have a business mindset at all. He just in the gym, work out, run with combat boots, work out with weighted gloves, you know what I'm saying, just be barbaric. You know, he old school, dog, right? Um, um, but he's loyal at the same time, just like Clarissa Shields. Like, I mean, she might be, you know, that's another story, but he one of them cats who loyal to his family, love his family. He going to ride to the death, right? And uh, the same time I had this conversation with Al getting me out of Flint because I knew this wasn't a place I could grow, you know what I'm saying? My grandfather came in with a contract and told me to sign it. 
and I love my grandfather to death. I was where I was because of my grandfather. I signed that contract for my grandfather. You know what I'm saying? Um, I knew instantly it was a bad move. I knew instantly it was a bad move, but I had hope. I was optimistic, right? And slowly but surely, I saw how 50 Cent was getting blackballed and how it was impeding on my career. And uh, long story short, we was at a baseball game in Miami and I called 50 Cent and said, listen, as long as I'm on the SP SMS promotion, I'll never fight again, you know, with you again. And he was like, hey, well, ain't nobody going to want you, Darrell. I said, well, just sign a contract saying I can speak to any promoter I want and I'll give it a try. And what happened in two, what, what was supposed to happen in two months happened in two years, which is my transformation back to Al. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and we continued like it did, but that relationship was burnt from the start. Cause I got the I got the raw side of Al after that. He tried to keep his composure and be Al, but the signs were not subtle at all. You know, um, just in his tone of voice. Actions, not so much tone of voice. And I get it, you know what I'm saying? So like I say my whole career, how it went and how it went was based on that crucial moment. On that crucial moment when my grandfather came with that contract and I said, and I wanted to say no, but I did what I, I did what I did because it's, it, it was what my family wanted. You know, I always from the outside looking and looked at that moment <clears throat> to congratulate Al. So I would love you to educate mm -hmm. me a little more on if, 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 if I'm given the right congratulations and feeling mm -hmm. having the right emotions because I looked at it like he ain't had to take you back and he did yes, yes, and yes. you needed him yes. because there was nowhere else for you to go. Did you feel mm -hmm. like did you mm -hmm. feel like he really took you back? Or cause it sounds yes. like it wasn't what I thought. You know, yes. I thought he took you back yes. and it was all good. You making it sound yes. like it might have yes. not been. Al made uh, an emotional made an emotional move. He went outside the box of business, what he got a degree in, what he's a professional at. You see what he's doing with Prime right now, and he continues to be, right? Uh, he saw a wounded animal and decided to get out of his car and take him off the side, to the side of the road. You know what I'm saying? And that went against, that went against all the guidelines that he was supposed to do. And at the same time, he did it at a cost. He's just like, he couldn't be the same Al he was before then. He continued to give my brother those benefits, those side, you know, um, you know, uh, side advantages, you know, that I didn't get. I mean, y'all saw how my last three fights went. It was on in the uh, a couple cards, and then my last fight with your nurse Gonzalez was on YouTube, right? Like I, it was shaming that at first, but now it's just like it's a part of my story, right? But. Al, bro, like I'm telling you and I'm telling everybody else right now, regardless of how I is and how much people hate him, Al was the shit. Like Al was the shit and I love him for what he did, but I hate him at the same time of how he did it. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I man, I just, it's like, you could have just left me on the side of the road. You could have just left me in the road. You could have just let me, you could have just let me right there. I would have been better off. You know what I'm saying? Like why? I, Cause I could have took it to another promoter. There's no doubt in my mind another promoter would have said, "You know what, Dre sitting there with all that skill, I'm gonna go get him." You know what I'm saying? This was 2015, 14, 13, something like that. 13, 14. I had too much more to give. You know what I'm saying? You see how my last performance went. You know, um, um. So in that notion, I, I, I'm more than I'm more than sure that I would have found another promoter who would have picked me up. And even though I would have had to deal with like his rules or whatever, his new way or how he do things, um, I would have been better off because I would have got all of that promoter at the end of the day. And I only got a piece of Al. I'm telling you right now, man, you know, Al was a shit for what he did for me. I got crazy love for him for that, but that feeling is just still there. You know what I'm saying? I can't shake that. You know what I'm saying? It's obvious. I don't, I hate to say this, but my brother is not better than me. You know what I'm saying? Like, he got all the opportunities in the world. You know what I'm saying? Like, all his opportunities was just being showered on him constantly. At the same time, I'm not only fighting, like, forget the first two fights. It was a comeback fight which on Fox. It was nobody even in the venue at the time after the fight was over. And the second one, oh, no, that wasn't televised. And the second one was what I said the first one was. Nobody was in the venue. The fight was over. The third one was against a former Olympian who just fought 
uh, 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 Ramirez got stopped without him in the 10th round. Tough opponent. Everybody thought I was going to lose. I got in there and I shine. You know what I'm saying? And, but that was on YouTube. That, did, that didn't deserve a YouTube performance. What happened? Uh, what, what happened with me and Al once we separated was a result of why I was on YouTube my last fight. Period, point blank, man. Like, that stemmed. You know, like, I love my brother to death, man. That's my guy. Like, we talk, we just talked before. You know, I talk to him as much as I can. You know what I'm saying? But the fact is, the fact is what it is. It's like, uh, when you see the opportunities he got versus the opportunities I got, it's just like, damn, like, they don't give, man, I don't give a fuck about Dre. Like, it just, you know, it just, it, 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 it it's that, you know? So, and, or the, at least that's how I look at it. You know, so you, you think that kind of hindered your relationship with your brother at all? Uh, so for him toward me, possibly, um, uh, but for me toward him, uh, my, my, my objective was to make sure I didn't uh show no malice or hate toward my brother, man. In fact, when he was getting world championships, man, I was right there. I made sure to not block my blessings by trying to envy his or impeding on his. I always want to see my brother. Listen, I'm just like my grandfather. I always want to see my family succeed, right? I'm just speaking on talent here. That's all. Like, he he knows he's the brawler. I know I'm the boxer. And the world knows this, right? So I'm not saying nothing that's just outlandish. Me and my brother had plenty of feuds, right? Um, um, But we always find a way back to each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the most important thing. Um, and, but I ain't gonna let a sport like boxing, this is not my life. This is a part of it. You feel me? So I ain't gonna let a sport like boxing destroy a lifetime of friendship, love, support, connection, unity. Um, yeah, that's not who I am, man. I see the big picture. I see the, I see the, the end of the rainbow here, you know? Dre, you know, my this is a totally different show than what we normally do. Uh, and this is supposed to be more where we're at with it but that's probably my fault (laughs) based off what you're saying you know the normal me in in me can't help but be me and it's like when you came back you did get those tatsuki fight and that's a title shot and you are also the guy that he and the gale right the gale he spent three Mm -hmm. points i mean that was record Mm -hmm. i don't think no one's won a purse bid that Mm -hmm. high yet yeah, so yeah. in that time span of you coming back, he did get you two title mm-hmm. shots. Thank you for bringing that up. Thank you for bringing that up, right? The first Uzukazagi fight was held in a handbag. Not the fight, but I ended up getting sick the first month or ended up getting pushed after one month in training camp with everybody in there and be getting sick. Um, a low iron. We had to cancel camp, start over. Um, uh, Got sick again. The sick, no, the sick. It, another month went by when we started camp again, and uh, uh, what else happened? It uh, another setback, and we pushed it again. So it turned out to be a six month training camp that cost me two hundred and some thousand dollars. Right, the camp alone cost me two hundred some thousand dollars. Right, um, this flying people back coming back, you know what I'm saying, cooks cooking for that time. Like, that time don't get executed because the fight got canceled. You know what I'm saying? They still got to get paid for their service, you know? So, um, um, yeah, and that's not me blaming out at all. You know what I'm saying? That's me just saying what it was and how I believe that's why the fight went like it did. I was done, you know? you ne- And this is why it's hard to gamble on fights right here. I'm going to tell you all right now. This is why it's hard for me to bet on fights. Because you never know what state of mind that athlete is in on that particular night. You never know if he had a bad training camp. You never know if he's going to come in with a bad fight. You never know what he had to fight, the demons he had to face, before he walked in that ring. Like, we ain't going to come at our tip-top every fight, every performance. It's just not going to happen. Some days going to be better than most, but you're going to have them days where, man, somebody put up 200000 all they had, and now they, you know, uh, you know, in a homeless shelter, mad at the particular athlete for having a bad night, but has no idea what he went through, right? The second fight with Uzukatagi, man, uh, again, thank God for the opportunity as well. 
uh, it was what it was. I don't got no excuse on that one. He got me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Virgil got sick. He got sick. So, like, he was sick all the fight week. Um, it got to a real bad point with Virgil. A real bad point. Like, he ended up having to go to the hospital. As a matter of fact, I didn't get a call from him. And so I called Dre like two weeks later and I told Dre, I said, listen, man, this ain't like Virgil to not pick up, bro. You need to call and make sure he's good. Dre called me back probably a couple hours later or the next day and was like, Dre, what you did, bro, you probably saved Virgil's life, man. Like, we, after you told me to call, I had his uh, wife give him a call. He didn't pick up. So she went to the house, found him on the floor of the kitchen passed out due to high blood pressure or, you know, diabetes or whatever it is he has. And be, turns out he was drinking a lot of chocolate milk, you know, uh, too sweet, passed out, you know, but the whole fight week, man, it was hard for me to stay focused that second Usatagi fight, man, because that was happening to him. He was sick. He had to stay in this room. Um, fight night, they had me in the venue. I already got checked up by the doctor, everything. They kept pulling me out of there. They kept pulling me out of there to go get more blood. I mean, to go get more physicals. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they didn't let me fight unless I pissed. When I walked in the venue for the second fight, they weren't there waiting for me like they were supposed to be. So I pissed. I wasn't even thinking about it. I just went in there. First thing I did was piss. Started warming up. You ain't fighting until you piss. The fight ain't happening. We just warming up. Virgil telling me to stay focused. And uh, I'm taking forever to try to piss. I can't go out until I do. Meanwhile, the broadcast is telling them something totally different. You know what I'm saying? So it was just all kinds of distractions, that fight. Um, and, uh, yeah, he gave me the gale. And the gale, man, that was. I think I did. I had an excellent performance, but he did drop me. So I get the gale that fight. You know what I'm saying? And I'm grateful for all of that. I'm grateful for all of that, right? I ain't saying I hate Al. I say I got a love-hate relationship with him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got crazy love for Al, bro. Crazy love. He did not have to do what he did. This part of my career, after he signed me back, could have never happened, right? So, like, mad respect, but, you know, it's just like, that's a, I mean, it's just pros and cons to it, you know? If you could change anything in your career, like, if there's one thing that you could change, what would it be? I ain't getting philosophical on you. I ain't about to tell you this long, drawn out, what if, right? My thing is this, so far, all of the evidence is inconclusive or conclusive. That's what it is. Conclusive. It's conclusive. Because of my struggles, I am that much more stronger. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I wouldn't change a damn thing because ain't no telling the person I'll be walking around uh, that'll be walking around or sitting here talking to you today. Like, adversity makes you, if you allow it to mold you in the right way. So I don't I don't believe in that, what if you could go back? That's a fantasy, right? And that's what we think about as human beings, but man, you can't change nothing that happened in your life, especially the bad, man. Those are the moments you get to really, truly find out who you are. When did your yeah. faith get this strong or has it always been? Even, no, not even close. Like I said, I say boxing in general was my crucible, right? Uh, it led me to understand life, you know what I'm saying, for what it is. Because um, a career is a short lifespan, but in, in, in compared to real life, you know, and the things you have to endure or go through, um, it's a short story. Um, and that gave me the realization that life is going to do the same thing if you let it. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be told no. You're going to try and you're going to fail. You know what I'm saying? The only thing you can do literally is get up and try again. Like, bro, I can sit in my pities. I can sit in my worries. It won't work at all. You know what I'm saying? Like, it it doesn't work for the good at all. It's like, that's something I realized. Like, I say I'm going to be as rich as i ever been. I say I'm going to have all the credibility I need. In the years to come, God willing, he gives me that time, you know, um, because I'm going to figure out a way past all of the bad shit that happened to me. That's going to continue to happen to me. Listen, bad shit is coming your way. Yours too. That's not me jinxing you. That's me telling you that life is going to happen continually because life is supposed to happen because you're living life and you got to learn from life. The only way you get wisdom is if you live life. The only way you get to live life is if you go through experience. The only way you go through experience and gain something from them is if you fail. 
If you get told no, if a nigga push you down, if a nigga get there faster than you did, you feel what I'm saying? Like I understand that to the to my core, now, nah, right? And I and I thank boxing for that. Sour. I'm sorry. Well, you know, with you moving on to the training aspect, I I find what you're doing super encouraging and admirable. Um, and I think you're doing it on a higher level, even with your YouTube channel. Like I see your content and the way your approach is, is very different to you know, say like a Hollywood Hino, who's also my bro and from the contender. And I mean, he's, he took off with the personal training after his career. You know, he's training Kevin Hart. He's training uh, Kelly from the Destiny's Child. He's, you know, he's, he's training all these uh, superstars and he's probably, I can, I can guarantee you, he's made more money in that than he ever did in the ring. Right. So, right. He's also a testament to life is not over after boxing. Right. Life right, just right. ends, really. Yeah. Like, you know, I was going through it turning 40, and like everybody's yeah. like, mm -mm, life begins right, at 40. Right. Equate You're that to everything, though. Life doesn't, you yeah, forget the life doesn't end at the boxing because that only talks to one group. We have to let every athlete know that every person who's worked that same job for 40 years that same thing like bro like something new is destined to happen or, or you're going to have to force yourself down another route like that's the core understanding of what what wisdom really brings and again this is what makes the story so beautiful or makes what i have to say so interesting right because of my perception of the bad things that happen in my life a lot of people, emotion leads the pact. You know what I'm saying? And we react and we get a, and we get a bad result until we decide to say, okay, what's, what's really possible now that I'm only presented with these two options instead of these three, right? Like, like, man, just understand that in every aspect of your life, don't think because you've been doing this your whole life, you can continue to do it your whole life. The reason why Hollywood, you know, was so big is not because, like, you know, the, he's still working with celebrities. It's because that man committed, right? He committed. Myra Golden said something so powerful to me one day, man. And it was, and this is a guy on a, um, on YouTube that I watch. I call him my online mentor. I never got a chance to meet him yet, right? Uh, in order for a seed, and that was in order for a seed to become a tree, immediately it has to cease being a seed right so being covered in that darkness right being trapped in that soil you is going to force you to become someone else but the sooner you accept that you can no longer be the person you've been your whole entire life because you're presented or forced down another path bro the sooner you embrace that the sooner you will understand right life a little more and you'll start to sprout into something ginormous, man. Compare a seed to any tree, to any tree. Compare a seed to a bush. Its growth potential is astronomical compared to who we are right here and right now. I have so much more to give than just the fucking boxer. Fuck him. I can care less about that dude. I'm glad he's gone. I'll never bring him back. Whatever life has for me, on the outs, going forward, I'm with it. You know what I'm saying? Whatever bullets are shot my way, whatever knives are, I got to dodge, you know, whatever bad people I have to endure, I'm willing, I'm ready, and I'm, I'm checking in regardless because I know this is the only way towards success. Forward is the way, backward is not. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm on. If you could give, you know, one word of advice to a young amateur kid maybe mm. you know just coming out of the olympics or you know is mm. being approached by mm. all these promoters and managers and what would what would your advice be to that kid yeah um man lose with flair <laughs> you know we live in the undefeated world today like lose with flair you know what i'm saying um lose with a vengeance right like 
Um, and that's not just a physical loss. That's dealing with bad promoters. That's having to endure, you know, your time out of the ring for two years, i.e. Andre Ward. You know what I'm saying? You see what great he became because of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, things are going to happen, right? Um, lose with flair. Continue to fight on. Um, always, and I mean always, fight with the end goal in mind. Like it's 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 detrimental that we win, right? And winning is important early on, right? Um, but if you know once you take a loss, uh, you know be that a bad fight, your know, bad performance, um, low pay, you know what I'm saying, not being able to support your family because of it. Um, use that, right? And uh, um, and like I said, use that as fuel with the end goal in mind. You know what I'm saying? This is where I want to get to. Even if I win this fight, I ain't there yet, right? Understand that. Have tunnel vision. Stay locked in the gym. Keep working and just wait for your opportunity. What about you know? when it comes to like financial literacy? Yeah. Um. Oh man, that's big. Cause how many people actually got that? Even the ones you see, even the guy you talking to right now, like how many people actually got financial literacy? How many people actually know what money can actually do? Right? It's like, right. Uh, um, don't ignore or don't be scared to pay a lawyer too much. You know what I'm saying? Don't be stupid at the same time, but um, for protection, um, Ask that lawyer that you're paying too much for protection for to school to school you a little bit on the game. You know, pick up a couple financial literacy books, whatever you want to choose, choose, um, and uh, uh, make good investments. Listen, starting out, I said I wanted to get the house I wanted, I want to get the cars I wanted, and you know, I wanted to, uh, and then after that, I'm good. Well, I got the house I wanted, I got the cars I wanted, and because of that, I ended up being in a hole most of my damn career. It's like no, start off in the hub, something that's gonna keep you safe, you know what I'm saying, small enough for you and your little family, you know what I'm saying, take every dime you make and invest in no matter how small, fail a couple of investments, get up and try another investment. If you don't know much about the investment and you like that investment, learn more about that investment, but by any means, don't buy anything that you desire, um, 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 uh, that you desire, right, that's just gonna satisfy the flesh don't buy it with money that you fought for. Buy it with money that your money made you. You know what I'm saying? And until you do that, start spending money. You know what I'm saying? Well, Dre, like, listen, I really appreciate you coming on here and talking to us and mm -hmm. just telling your story because I think it's, I think you could write a book, honestly, out of all mm -hmm. your experiences you've been through in, in your life and, and just within the time of boxing. Um, but, you know, for the audience that's watching, um, what's your, give out your social media. And also, mm -hmm. would you be open to fighters reaching out to you if, say, if they wanted to get your advice on anything and, you know, just pick your brain, would you be open to, to talking to younger guys? They can reach me. Like, before my social media gets too big, they can reach out to me there. And I'm already up, like, 14, 15,000 subscribers in a month and a half um due to this newfound little thing that i'm good at <laughs> you know um so before that gets too big i would say dm me i'm not going to put my information out there because too many like, like i said when I, I put my number out there one time i'm like should i do that i don't think that's smart and what happened exactly what i thought was gonna happen everybody called me from every state talking about i love to work with you man but i live all what you called me for <laughs> you know what i'm saying like so just hit me on the dm follow me at my, my tag on instagram is andre Durrell. um uh, TikTok, same thing. YouTube, I think you just type in Andre Durrell right now. I only got like 62 uh, subscribers, but I'm about to focus on that like crazy. But it's Andre Durrell, I think, my handle. Uh, but you'll find it. It's just my name. And, you know, I got I got about nine videos up right now, nine shorts, you know. So, but uh, I'm definitely willing to give advice to the fighters who want it and need it. Um, I got your back, man. I got your back. We need, we definitely need um, guys like yourself mm -hmm. to be a soundboard for other fighters and people that are going through the same type of things that you have yeah. been through in your career. And, and, you know, maybe we can save people from going through what you might have been through or worse. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate mm -hmm. you coming on. Um, we're going to try to make this a weekly thing. 
um, letting you guys just come on and share your story and and speak about whatever you feel like you need to speak about. Right, right, right. Express yourself, man. That's yeah, more that's important. Right. Man. That's probably the best thing you can tell a young black man, you know what I'm saying, because they don't know how to do that, you know, but that's another story. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I appreciate y'all too, man, both of y'all. We appreciate like I love you both of y'all, man. Our this first was, guest, and it was, it was a good one, man. Yes, no thank doubt. you. No doubt. Like this every, no, every, uh, every Thursday at 3 p.m., God mm. willing. Mm -hmm. So who's, no who's your next doing. guest, Sarah? I believe it will be Jamel Herring okay. will be our next guest. He, he's also going to be speaking about his retirement and how he transitioned into the boxing world from the military. That man's seen a lot, you know. And now him coming back into the sport after, you know, the loss to Shakur and losing his title and how, how he dealt with that. So it should, should be a good chat. Well, Dope. until the next one, Andre, thank you so much. And uh, to the audience, catch us next Thursday, 3 p.m. Goodbye. Thank you both. No Goodbye. doubt, man. Appreciate y'all. Likewise. Peace.